two brilliant presentations, and uh, I, I sort of wanted to amalgamate them really before I start because I was in an airport, Susie and I were at an airport, and uh, we heard these. And I, I'm interested also in accents and language, and we heard these guys talking to each other, and I thought I couldn't quite pick out which language was Scandinavian language it was, you know, and I was trying to really pick it up and just just the guys talking together and I was near them and uh, is it Swedish or Norwegian I wasn't sure exactly so in the end I went up to them and I said so where are you from and they said from Newcastle because <laughs> <laughs> that was my cock up but uh, it was basically you know obviously when people don't meet them they don't moderate their accent when they're talking together and these guys were all Geordies um, Anyway, I'm going to talk about street art, and after those two very different talks, this is sort of more informative and very visual. I'm probably going to run out of time, so I want to whiz through fairly quickly. But question as well, first of all, is uh, hands up who loves graffiti? Okay, yeah, it's wavering. Uh, hands up who loves street art? Like, what's the difference? Okay, it's... Yeah? Sorry? Sometimes. Okay, yeah. Well, graffiti, often people think of graffiti in a very negative way. Yeah. Uh, as you said, destroying buildings. Yeah. Graffiti, the origin of graffiti, I think it's <laughs> scratching on surfaces, whether it's vertical or horizontal surfaces. And in this particular image, you can see quite a few different... <coughs> there's uh, some stencil art there, there's some uh, markups there, there's some... Uh, there's various elements of graffiti, a little bit of politics as well. And so we'll just whiz through a few. Uh, am I going the right way? Yeah, from very early graffiti. Has anybody been to that so caves? Amazing caves in the south of France. You can't actually go and see these originals, but they've replicated it exactly as they were. And not only is this graffiti, quite old graffiti, but I was watching something about these caves, and it was actually aerosol art graffiti, but the aerosol was from, they sprayed by blowing the paint from their mouths, the pigment from their mouths, to create these, some of these ones, they, they suspect, I mean, they're 17,000 years old. So in fact, you know, it's not only is it painted, but some of these could have actually been the equivalent of aerosol paint, and of course we do. That's how we see graffiti often is, is with sprays. And, if it's scratching on a surface, well obviously that's Egyptian from Luxor and uh, obviously when we look at hieroglyphs we, we never knew what hieroglyphs really meant until the discovery of the Rosetta Stone where they could compare three different languages and then they could understand and of course a lot of hieroglyphs glyphs, like a lot of ancient scrawlings or graffiti were shopping lists and things like that. I'm not suggesting this one. Or that. <laughs> but very simple things, you know. And of course, we really only know about the deaths of most of these ancient people rather than their lives. But we can speculate. But graffiti. Uh, this is in Sri Lanka, and it's in a beautiful mountain. And originally, there were about 500, I believe. They reckon about 500 of these beautiful uh, paintings, usually very buxom ladies, beautiful ladies there. And again, I mean, maybe as opposed to the, uh, the hunting, but possibly praying for hunting, I'm not sure, or just enjoying the hunt, or the, the merchant's messages, you know, this one obviously may have had a more stimulating uh, uh, purpose, but it gets 5th fifth, fifth century, we can only speculate. And in Cambodia, of course, we, everybody knows about Angkor Wat, but around Angkor Wat also, there's some other beautiful uh, statues and carvings, uh, and one of, some of my favourite are the ones which are actually hidden among the trees. They've left one so the, the trees can hide them away and it makes it very mysterious. But I, I wouldn't, maybe you'd call that more of a sculpture, but there's a lot of scratchings, if you like, or graffiti. Um, more recently, uh, the Berlin Wall. And of course a wall is a perfect place for graffiti or street art. The distinction, more of you prefer street art than graffiti, because we have this image of graffiti as tagging, such as this, as opposed to street art, which some people may consider that. But I think a lot of street artists, there is conflict between the two, actually, besides with my nephew who's been over from Sydney, we've seen him for a few days, he's a graffiti, and we were walking around Brighton today, and actually some of the legal walls, as they're called, where graffiti artists could spray, they're now developing 
around the lanes. And But we found some other, I think it's Trafalgar Street or something, where there's a new street of graffiti. So graffiti artists will find streets. And they were legal graffiti artists there. But obviously we see these as legal graffiti <laughs> art and these as illegal. And I said, well, because I kind of agree in a way. But he said, well, what, you can't have one without the other. You know, that's his argument, that you can't always have this sort of very formal, more, more traditional, if you like, without this sort of graffiti. Um, and then Osaka is one of the most lively and colourful areas for street art. But of course, street art here is all advertising, but also solid as well, you know, and wonderful, like hieroglyphs really, aren't they, uh, kanji. Uh, and one of the liveliest places for, for street art, if you like, and that's marketing. So street art has many purposes, and there are a few of them through the ages. We took that one last year in Tokyo. But you know this one? <laughs> Probably. We were here last night as well with my, with my nephew. Um, but also, do you know when, how long this is? What's it for? What's the purpose? The earliest... Um That's great, thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll do a joint presentation. <laughs> but what is it for? I mean, that's one of the beauties is we don't really know. I mean, maybe it was a fertility. I think that was either a spoof uh, story. I think it was probably an April Fool's story. But uh, it could well have been a fertility symbol. Who knows? You know, because a, a lot of these are, aren't they? These ancient chalk carvings. So various reasons, and again, that could certainly classified scratching, you know, on the downs. Yeah? There, there was some graffiti done on the downs in grey paint by John Major. By John Major? No, <laughs> by John Major. Oh, really? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. About 20 years ago, I guess. Oh, right, yeah. Well, there's others around. We've got the White Horse in Wilmington as well. Oh, is it Wilmington? Alfreston as well. Yeah. And, of course, street art, certainly. You may have seen that at the Tower Art Gallery. Uh, if you haven't, you should go and have a look at it. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, that's Lothar they've got, so that's just been commissioned. I think it's going to stay up for a year. So, uh, if graffiti changed anything, it would be illegal. And of course, a lot of graffiti is illegal. And um, Theo, my nephew, was explaining, you know, the difference between legal rules, which are accepted, and some, not, I don't think Eastbourne, but certainly in Brighton, and a lot of places, I've listed some beginning with B that I've got illustrations, do accept that, you know, graffiti artists, or they need a space to be able to express themselves. And I suppose if you have, you could say, well, that limits them, but it also controls it. So, but some graffiti artists wouldn't want to simply do that. Uh, you know, Rolf Harris sprung to mind when I was thinking of this presentation. And yeah, there's a, you know, Rolf Harris, I don't know if you ever remember him when he did these incredible landscapes on a big, I didn't include Rolf because for obvious reasons, but, uh, you know, again, hieroglyphs and uh, painted on a large scale, it's something which, which goes on throughout the world. Um, tools of the trade for a particular, but general graffiti, a lot of them are with screens uh, and using stencils, so that's why you've got squeegees and you've got rollers and things like that. Obviously aerosol as well. Uh, I looked at one or two of Tools of the Trade things and one or two of them had sort of more anarchic tools, you know, to break into buildings and things like that. <laughs> These ones would be perhaps more typical of a, of a graffiti artist. Uh, so looking at different definitions, the tags. I was hoping I'd get you to do some tagging tonight. I've actually bought the spray paint and I thought the garden was going to be open and there was a fantastic white board for you to go and have a go at. Unfortunately, you may have seen it's closed, so you won't have the opportunity. But tagging is the very first thing, the signature of the artist. 
And so that's the most basic form of graffiti is actually to have your tag. Now the one thing about graffiti artists which purists would say, and even an artist like Banksy, a street artist, who is he? We don't really know. With this, he's from Bristol. We don't know much more about that. Some people say he was mixed up with a man, Massive Attack. You know, there's various, and part of the, uh, the character of the graffiti artist is anonymity. You know, partly, originally, to keep the police away from them, you know. So, that, he's carried that through with great commercial success, I have to say. Uh, so the next thing after a basic uh, tag is the throw-up, which is, if you like, lettering which has a sort of 3D effect, you know, it's outlined, maybe with colour, but fairly simple. And they're called throw-ups. And then, of course, the next stage to that would be adding colour or style to it. And um, obviously, again, that would be done largely with, with aerosol sprays. And as does Banksy, as quite a lot of more, more recent street artists, probably since the 1980s and 90s, is the use of a stencil. So again, and the good thing about stencil is you can take it to different places and reproduce that image again and again. So it wouldn't necessarily be in part, but it could be, it could be something that you could put on the wall and spray, and then you have the black image spraying through where there's uh, the space in the in the uh, stem cell itself. Now, New York City uh, was probably the where it all started, and a lot of stuff started in New York City. Um, and obviously, like Piccadilly Circus, there's so much in the way of bright lights and colour. But New York, when it started, that was a very very different place. I don't know if you went to New I went to New York a couple of times in the 70s. Very, very different, very edgy place compared to New York City now. And TAC 183, 183 being the street he was from, was probably the first of the graffiti artists. And as you say, you know, we were saying in terms of his style, you might say, well, not very stylish, but he was the godfather because he was the first recognized uh, <laughs> guy who sprayed throughout and you can see him so for, a, for you know he was fairly anonymous but obviously there were some images taken of him uh, and probably the first uh, places where graffiti artists could work on would be bridges or trains Philadelphia as well as New York being the, the focal point for these attacks and as I said, New York was a lot seedier <laughs> in those days, and I don't think you see subway trains like this in New York nowadays, but uh, you know, that was part of the edginess of the New York scene, and of course in the 70s, I mean, the 70s, the punk scene, you could argue, but certainly New York was one of the places where that scene evolved, and hip-hop also evolved in this area, and uh, hip-hop, skateboarding, Graffiti art, they've all got the same sort of street feel about it, you know, and the fashion as well. Um, but in the 60s, of course, Andy Warhol was making screen prints, and you could say he was capturing commercial images and reproducing them. Uh, and he did have quite a big effect on artists such as Basquiat. Does anybody know how much this painting sold for, for Basquiat? He was a young black artist who was a street artist initially, a very good friend of Annie Warhol, who did collaborate on work as well. Any guesses? Huh? $110 million, just over. So I think he's the second, the second most valued painting sold of a living artist, so he's not alive now. Uh, another artist who you may have seen his work, and it's actually, he's got an exhibition to take Liverpool now, at the moment, is Keith Haring. Uh, he was a gay artist at the time of AIDS in New York. He died of AIDS. Um, but uh, these images are quite common and very jolly. Some were political, but this is a, just a joyful one really, but some of his work was political as well. So all of these guys were New York artists and uh, had a big influence on, on the scene. This guy, although he was very well known in New York and worked a lot there, he's actually an Englishman. Has anybody heard of Julian Bieber? I'll see if I can get this up very briefly, show you some of his work. I'm running out of time. Mm. So he works on, with chalk, 
No, it's not. It doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think I'm going to wear it. Okay, it doesn't matter. Cock up again. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. So anyway, he works on chalk, and of course, this isn't a real uh, hose, and it isn't a real uh, PowerPoint uh, power here. It's a real PowerPoint, but basically, he works on chalk and gives the impression of 3D, and that's one of his pieces of work. Yeah, and he does some, some amazing work, so it's worth looking up Julian Bieber. Incredible street artist, but obviously working on the horizontals on the vertical plane. Um, right, stuff in now. Improvised. Improvised, okay. Well, <laughs> I did actually bring I did actually bring some spray. We can't really do this indoors, but in terms of a quick lesson, and I have got some <laughs> basically when you're using the aerosol, uh, when I I'll show you some pictures of when I worked in the Emirates very briefly and then I'll explain holding the, uh, the spray, because there's different techniques for that. And of course we know Banksy, even though we don't actually know the guy. And so some of his work is funny, some of it's political, uh, and that's one about global warming, you know, so a recent one. And of course he's very much a guerrilla artist who pops up and creates these works all over the world. And of course very commercial in a sense as well. I had a project, I worked with in the UAE, and one of the things I was teaching was visual communication with uh, Emirati women. So it's quite interesting, and this is an article in the paper about the project I did. Now you can imagine, the Emirati women are probably rather more conservative than you'd imagine most street artists would be. <laughs> and uh, their project was to celebrate National Day. And so I came up with this idea of doing some graffiti boards with them. Uh, here they are at work, that's me, <laughs> and teaching them these same similar techniques as you can see here. Some of them also, the, the other thing, we didn't have proper graffiti sprays there. I mean, these were a lot more, we used car spray. So it was very, very difficult. A lot of masking tape was involved. <laughs> but uh, they got the general idea anyway. But they were celebrating the nation, of course. They couldn't criticize the nation. It was the national day. So uh, celebrating it. And here's uh, some of the girls there. By week two, they were playing hip hop music and they were wearing baseball caps backwards. So they were getting in, into the mood, some of them, until they were told they weren't allowed to. Not by me. Uh, well, I can't show that, I don't So, so I'm just also running out of time, I think, Tim, anyway. Should I try with If it doesn't work, don't worry about it if it's not working. I think I'll, I'll just do it on without it. Doing yeah. I did a film. I did a filmmaking course at Brighton Film School and I was quite interested in the comedy, if you like, of these two uh, lads who were, make, who were making a, a move, we were making a spoof documentary and I was the documentary maker and they were skateboarders, they were wearing the clothes, they were break dancers and they were also graffiti artists, but I'm afraid it's not working. Now, I told you B2B, a few countries, a few cities here that we've recently visited. Does anybody recognise what that is? Which is from which place? A B. A B. Belgium. No, a city. City. Birmingham. What did you say? Hungary, you said. Budapest. Budapest, yes, okay. So Rubik, of course, was from Budapest. Yeah. And so we actually went on a walking tour, a graffiti walking tour in Budapest, and it was fantastic. Uh, so, you know, there are even walking tours of graffiti in certain cities and so these are just a few of Budapest. Now I don't know if any of you remember or certainly heard about but it's quite a long time ago where Hungary beat England 6-3 in football when England was supposed to be the greatest football team. I think Ferenc Puskas played for Hungary at the time so that's a huge wall painting celebrating that victory which they'll never let anyone ever forget. Uh, this, what, this was actually in another B but it's Bratislava on the same trip. Uh, this year, and I just love that one. You know, I mean, this is all painted. 
but it's just such a beautiful, such a beautiful wall, isn't it? Really, and Bratislava again, you wouldn't think so, but it's got some fantastic graffiti there. This one isn't there anymore, but what B do you think this might be? Brighton. Brighton, yeah. And a lot of Brighton, as I say, a lot of it's changing and developing the lanes and so on, so quite a few of these are disappearing. <coughs> Uh, and that one's another one in Brighton. So if you want to see graffiti, you don't have to go to Budapest, Bratislava. You can go to Brighton. You won't see much in Eastbourne, I'm afraid. Uh, so anyway, some of the references. Uh, Basquiat, Keith Haring, Beaver. Mr. Brainwash is another one. Now, Mr. Brainwash is an artist who's... He was almost like a spoof... Uh, <coughs> street artist but gained notoriety in this movie which I thoroughly recommend, Exit Through the Gift Shop. Has anybody seen that film? No, no, no. Yeah. We've got it, we haven't seen it yet. Very well, very well worth watching. It's a kind of, it's, a, it's the hunt for Banksy if you like, mm -hmm. but Mr. Brainwash is an artist. I haven't shown any of the slides but he's connected to it too. So a very, very quick whiz through um, and I was going to ask you to give it a try but uh, I'm afraid We've run out of time, and B, we haven't got a garden to do it on. So I told Viv, I said, well, maybe we'll just spray paint the front of the printer's playhouse. So if you can think of a tag, I've got the paint. But actually, just very briefly, yeah. So if you're spraying a wall, if you choose to do so, uh, there are different nozzle thicknesses. So obviously, that very fine line, you need to get a very fine nozzle. And... Uh, the further you are away, obviously the greater diffusion, but you also got, you can spray it like that, which gives you a much darker here and then spread out here. So it's very much about how you hold the pan as well as, uh, this is black, but you know, this would be mainly used as an outline. Um, but um, as I said, it's, it's a, for me, it's an exciting, even if it's a rebel art form, it's an exciting art form. And hopefully, you know, you can see some graffiti or street art that you'll really like. Making that distinction is quite difficult, because I think of street art as more of the formal paintings or murals on walls. But some graffiti artists or street artists might differ, and certainly there's a wide range. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.